Well, hi and welcome to my beautiful office. It's where I study, photograph and film the agile antichinus, birds and animals, and much, much more. In this video, I'd like to share with you my experiences with nature and photography. Well, good morning. Welcome back to my office. It's a beautiful foggy morning and I'm looking for a landscape shot. Well, a forest scape. Hopefully with an animal in it. The problem I always have though in this reserve you'll find something nice, a nice scene, beautiful fog, track following around, it's got a bit of shape to it but you need something else to help it out, an animal in the shot up close and it never happens or there's a beautiful scene but it's ruined by dead branches hanging or you know whatever so like I have at the minute here I've got a yellow robin by the time I get up close to it it'll fly off so uh, this old oak tree here you can see just up there that would probably be nice as a backdrop but there's um, a lot of crap around it just <laughs> it ain't gonna work the bird's gonna fly off as I walk up anyway Good morning, young robin. So yes, it's a beautiful morning. I'd love to be able to get a shot of him He's, if it was a bit lower. No, if it's lower, see so you've got blackberries. It just, it's always something. It's always something that's sitting there. No, she's off now. I want to keep wandering around. I might be lucky. I might see something I can take a shot of. It looks nice, but uh, at the minute, I'm not seeing nothing. That's bloody freezing. <laughs> you can see I have a pair of ground thrush. There are a pair that nest around here regularly each year. But we're still in winter and they like to start nesting very soon. Actually it wouldn't be surprised me if I've already chosen a nesting site. So we have quite a few that come into the park. Take this off, it's bloody freezing this morning. As you can see it's really foggy. And there'll be plenty of grain and crap on this video. But they are a pair that continuously come back to the same similar area. And there's a few other pairs that uh, inhabit <laughs> other parts of the reserve as well. I think I've counted about six pairs over the years that continuously come back. But they're really hard to find their nests they're camouflaging well but i usually find them i'll hunt them out well, it's the afternoon the sun is out the fog has lifted there's beautiful light coming into the reserve and on my wanders around the reserve this morning i noticed that some of the wattle trees had started to burst a little bit with their flower buds so i thought right a bit of shit out now that the sun's out look for some chainsaws in the background <sighs> I can never get it quiet in here it's either kids or chainsaws or tractors anyway so I've nipped around the bush for about two hours looking for the perfect subject to film with the silver wattle flowers starting to open because I need more of that sort of stuff in my library oh, I couldn't find anything nothing suited everything's up high nothing's down low up close so I struggled. There will be probably next week or the week after. I'll just have to wait. <laughs> I just saw beautiful lights really uh, should be out here getting stuff done. And now I'm seeing there's a lot more things I need to be looking at besides the wattle tree is the swamp rat. Now the swamp rat 
is pretty much like a really big guinea pig but with a short tail. I've just noticed walking through this little part here where I have nesting rocks or nesting stump number two for the agile antichinus. Just where I sit over here there are runs in the ground so the swamp rat reconstructing new nesting sites because they weren't here before. They burrow underground but they make these half tunnels. Now I'll see it's a bit dark down there but I'll see whether I can uh, get the camera to show you what I'm talking about. There we go. You can just see that little dugout. Now they go through the grass here. So it's a half tunnel. Then it runs through and into a hole there. You can just see that. A bit dark, but there you go. There's one out here on the other side of this tunnel that runs along the ground, this half tunnel. Just down here. They've got quite an extensive warren, a bit like rabbits, they just dig tunnels everywhere and they have little pop-outs here and there. So that's all fresh, awesome for me to uh, film them. You draw them out with a little bit of food, they like a bit of honey and all that sort of stuff, so I'll draw them out and uh, see if I can get footage, but I'll have to do that next week. But this looks like a highly active place. So yeah, it's time for me to start um, getting back into filming wildlife. The days are really short with light though, that's going to be the biggest problem. So I'm sort of stuck with the weekends. I finally found on my way home, silver wattle flower starting to open up a little bit there, the bud's starting to open up. Uh, but you know, I've got the noise in the background, I've got distractions of uh, crap in the background there. <sighs> bright, bright subjects, the sun's moving across here. Oh, I've got people walking past now, so um, we'll stop vlogging. The 5D Mark II. What an amazing camera this has been for me. Upgraded from the 5D Mark II because this is designed for wildlife with the focusing system. I needed, desperately needed, something that would latch onto a subject instantly without any hassles, where the 5D Mark II couldn't do that for me. Missed out on a hell of a lot of images, but this certainly made up for it. Focus on a subject, nail it every time. Now when we're talking about focusing system on this, Canon, in their wisdom, decided to go away from what was referred to on the original version of this, the 7D, as being ET-like focusing system. It knew exactly what you wanted. So they went away from that system, an intelligent system, to one that gave us all the controls that we thought we needed. So we have focus cases, so it's how quick it hooks on or how slow you want it to hook on to a subject. And you'd have to work that out as you went along. There's quite a few in there. If you're not, if your subject's not moving all that quick, well maybe you know it's better to go to this sort of one or if it's really fast, you need to go to this one to boost things up a bit. And along with that, you had to work out what combination of zones would work. So it's been interesting working with all those things. But in the end, Canon, you gave us too much. Absolute waste. And I very rarely use most of the focusing things in here. You have to work out what works best for you in the environments that you're working in. That's okay when you're only working in one environment, but when you move out to another environment, you have to remember, how did I have the camera set up last time? I'm not one for writing things down, can't be bothered with that shit, and I shouldn't have to. Right, for a forest environment, I use case three, works the best, tweaked it a little bit just to make it a bit quicker, bit more responsive 
and also I use one focus square but with the expansion. If I'm photographing something that's really small and the focusing, you know, if you have an expansion, it might go outside of the subject. There might be an instance where it may not catch onto it quickly. It might go for something beside it that's bright. It doesn't happen all the time, but it has happened occasionally. So I find go down to a single square so that it covers the image, doesn't go outside of it, and uh, well, the subject, I should say, and you're right all the time. Works beautifully in the forest. Can't use the zones, the auto focus zones. Yeah, it won't work it out. It's, there's too many distractions. It'll never go for the right one. So the zones are out. Now, when we go out of the forest, when I go out of the forest, into another environment, down the beach, say, I want to take some photographs of birds in flight. Beautiful blue skies, might have some puffy clouds. Set the camera up to allow for those sort of changes. When you're tracking a bird coming towards you, the way this is set up for the forest, it doesn't understand what the hell you want. It's got this beautiful blue sky. Something else in the scene, even though it's right in the middle and it should be obvious, it's going, um, um, what are we doing? <laughs> So you have to change the case scenario to suit. So I usually find that case four works better for birds in flight, combined with the large or small zoned area in the middle. So large focus point or, a, or the small focus point. It just depends on the lighting conditions and everything, whether you're using one or the other. But that's what I remember. You just have to work it out when you get out there, which one it is. And you can, it takes a little bit of time and you might only get one chance to take a bird in, in flight. And by the time you got it worked out, it's too late, it's gone. So Canon, mate, forget about this uh, focusing system. I thought it'd be awesome. It's not, there's too much. Just give me a highly intelligent system like you have on the 1DX range, intelligence. That's what we need more than all these adjustments, all these zones, these case scenarios. One thing I will mention before I go is that uh, I would love to have in a camera the ability to be only have in a zone that are of my choosing, be able to use one, two or three lines together because in a forest environment, if I have any more than that, it's going to run all over the place. Where if I can control the centre ones, say 10 across, my subjects coming across their agile antichinus, bounding across a log, it would only have that to work on. It wouldn't have much else to try and work out what I want to focus on. It would, should understand it and it would hook onto it pretty quickly and I would be able to get it in the air as it bounds like a possum. Because we have blackout, I can't follow the subject. So I need it to be able to go across the scene, be able to get caught by those focus squares. You know, and uh, depends on my situation, how much I want to crop in or whatever, zoom in whether I have two or three, be awesome. So that's what I would like to see in the next generation. I know, I don't think we're going to ever see a 7D Mark III. That era is pretty well much gone. We're going to mirrorless. So in the mirrorless range, that's what I would love. That's all from me, from Tech Talk with the 7D Mark II. Well, welcome back to my sound booth. I'm doing a little experiment, something I thought of the other night, that might work beautifully for me. Now I have a setup for doing my voiceovers. Laptop outside, mouse here with me. I can wirelessly work my um, Ableton Live 10 version to do my voiceovers. Now I don't get any noise floors, so any background noise or anything, and you shh, 
nice it's really good really good with the setup that I have uh, have the road uh, I can't remember it I'll put all the details up here of what I'm using and everything but I have my big shotgun microphone that I've used a lot over the years out in the forest I always always get background noise when it's perfectly dead quiet all you should hear is the owls and any other animal that's making a noise not shh which sounds like the, it's windy like the trees are blowing the, the leaves around and that's not the case at all it is dead silence and that's what I want I've never been able to capture that And I've put it down to the preamps in my cameras. Or is it the microphone? So that's what the experiment's about. Soon as how the preamp that I have here doesn't give off any of that background noise. I'll give this a go through that. And hopefully this little experiment works beautifully and there is no background noise. Then... I am going to take this out at night and get some beautiful sounds, if that's the case. For the library, for the documentary, I have a lot of night uh, images of the Agile going about its business and other animals, but the sound is shit. <laughs> so if I had this, this would be great to be able to use that. All right. Enough waffling, let's uh, get on with the experiment. So activate my audio section. Me, 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 me. It's working. All right. So we're on and without my glasses on, it seems to be working. Yeah, it's working. All right. That's it. Dead quiet. My experiment was a complete success. That audio clip you listened to, I had to turn the volume up extremely high to be able to hear any background noise. So it's very minimal. At normal levels, it's clean as a whistle. It's beautiful. So taking this out into the forest is going to help me out a hell of a lot, get that clean sound without any background noises It'll wreck everything like it's done in the past. Right, so a nice little setup here. Going to be a pain with all this extra equipment to set up and you know, take out in the forest, but well worth it, that is for sure. So I have a 15 inch laptop with Ableton Live that came with the interface here for the microphone, and that's the AL1 from Rode. So yeah, awesome that I got some really good software that works really well. Bit of a pain in the ass at first though, to set it up. I had no idea why I couldn't record my voice. But I looked at a whole heap of tutorials. Finally, one person gave me the key to why I couldn't get it to work. So it's not user friendly, in my opinion, not at all. all right, so taking this out into the forest, I'll have to remember when I'm filming my little marsupial, the Agile Antichinus, running across leaves and getting all that beautiful audio and owls hooting in the background. Before I stop recording, I need to clap my hands so that I can sync up audio with the film clip. Very important that I remember that. I'm probably stuffing up every now and then. But I can't do it at the start because I'll scare the subject, right? So we have to do it at the end. That is it for me this week. Hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, 
click on my pretty little face just down there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And if you'd like to go and see all the crazy things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon here at the end of this video. Take it to my channel. So over a hundred videos to choose from. Oh, I talk about photographing and filming in a forest environment. Give you plenty of tips there. Go on holidays, make little documentaries of my trip. Oh man, there's tons of stuff. Go and have a browse. There'll be something there of interest to you, I'm sure. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.